Hello there, English 215 students. Um, I hope that you're, you each are doing well, and I want to give you a brief setup of the reading you're doing for this week. This is William Faulkner's piece. Uh, you can't see that. F two pieces from The Unvanquished. I've assigned you one based upon your last name, um, and uh, hopefully, maybe you can read both, though I think making your way through ambuscade, which literally means ambush or retreat, both are military terms. I think making it through one in the major events will be a challenge in and of itself. Um, Faulkner is generally considered, uh, well, I want to introduce you to him as a writer. He's generally considered one of the greatest um, uh, American writers of the 20th century. Um, and, you know, the thing that he does is he incorporates kind of a stream of consciousness. You'll notice this in the long paragraphs, often at the end of both of these sections, of both of these short stories, that have a uh, stream of consciousness narration. Um, with very, it's one long rambling sentence, in other words. And the thing that I want you to know about him, and most of you are from Louisiana, but even if not, you're taking a school, uh, classes at a Louisiana school. Um, he's from neighboring Mississippi, and he grew up around the Oxford area. Uh, the image that I have on the course website is from his, his house, Rowan Oak, and the pines and oaks that line the way. I happened to go there last summer. It was a start, a wonderful experience. I got to tour the grounds, got to see the house. It, it was a great um, experience to see Roanoke. Um, so note that he's a Southern writer. Uh, he's based in Mississippi. He experiments with stream of consciousness and modern, kind of a, a modernist um, uh, experimentation in his longer works. The two pieces we read, uh, Ambuscade and Retreat, or at least I'm assigning you one, um, all of these pieces, right, um, I'm also reading Raid uh, right now, um, all these pieces are short stories about the same pair, Bayard or Bayard Sar Sartorius and Ringo, or Maringo, um, as he's often called. Two boys. Faulkner collected these stories um, and published them separately, and then it was made into, this isn't really a novel, but a collection. It's called The Unvanquished it's all about Bayard and um, and Ringo's adventures as boys. It's told through Sarti, he's Bayard or Sarti, uh, Sarti's consciousness, though you don't get too much in terms of his internal world. You get the external things like watching his father leap over, um, you know, a, a hole or a, a part in the grass. Um, that's because he's, he's young, I'm guessing maybe 11, give or take, and he's remembering things as he saw them through his memory, but it's refracted through a young boy's consciousness. Um, in this sense, we, we question, you know, did Faulkner deliberately write the uh, collection of stories like with a building adventure towards for Ringo and Sardi? Was the, were these just offhand tales that were collected? Um, the, each of them moves chronologically. So ambuscade is one point in time, retreat is another. You'll be able to see each other's responses, by the way, and get a sense for, for each story, even if you weren't assigned that story. Um, ambuscade is about the Union soldiers coming in to, um, uh, to the, that, that part of Mississippi. And the idea of retreat is that they're trying to move their family to Memphis and trying to gather their, their trunk all these things um, as they're escaping the northern um, invasion onto, onto southern land, or at least uh, the northern troops coming onto southern land. So, in essence, both these stories are telling moments in time. Raid, which I'm reading now, is very similar. Um, they're actually on the road, and there's a subtext to it of the latter two stories, Retreat and Raid, that um, African-Americans, when coming across General Sherman, you'll see this, some of the, the exchange that Lush has, um, or at least hearing of General, um, General Sherman, they think that they're free. And so there's going to be large groups of traveling African-American uh, slaves or, or former slaves. Um, the Emancipation Proclamation has occurred. Um, and it, so that's a subtext to it, as it's told from a white um, upper middle class family with a colonel in the, the militia. Much like uh, Twain's makeshift militia, Colonel Sartoris Bayard, or Sardi's father, um, serves in the Confederate military, but they don't seem to be engaging much with Union forces. They're, they seem to be doing stuff behind the scenes and all of that. Um, the thing you want to note early on, I mean, we know that the males are gone because um, the Civil War 
and uh, there is only women like Granny, who has you know somewhat antiquated Southern ideals. Um, and we know that they encounter Union soldiers. Um, the scene that I want you to focus on for, if you're doing, or what one scene I think you should focus on if you're doing Ambuscade, I'm looking on my page 30 and 31, is when the colonel interrogates Granny in her house and the two boys are hiding under her dress. They just shot at a Union soldier and the horse. They injured the horse. And the sergeant... Um, Excuse me, the sergeant is convinced and says, but Colonel, we saw them two kids run in here. All of us saw them. And then the Colonel responds, didn't you hear this lady? There are no children here. Where are your ears, Sergeant? Or do you really want the art artillery to overtake us with a creek bottom not five miles away to be got over? Well, sir, you're Colonel. But if it was me, Colonel, and, and then he pauses and stops there. Um, the Colonel knows what's going on. I, I, I'm interested, and this is more me than anything else, I'm interested in what happens when uh, Southern female gentry, like in Mary Lowborough's piece, meet Union soldiers. And and in this one, um, one wants to get the boys who shot at the man of the horse. The horse gets killed. Hopefully, I don't think the man got killed. Um, and th this, the colonel obviously knows they're hiding and is trying to protect them. He see, he's uh, you know trying to protect the grandmother, even though he's Union and she's a Confederate sympathizer. All these things are occurring. Anyway, um, you know, we want to develop a timeline. And in terms of Faulkner's vast mythology, this piece is the earliest one in his timeline. Um, what I mean by that is, is Faulkner basically creates an entire mythology based on many of the characters in his novels. Like, it, it, the best equivalent I can give to you as a modern audience would be the Stephen King stories that are set in Maine. And I doesn't one of the new Netflix series try to unite all of them? Um, Stephen King stories, you can kind of figure out where they might be in Maine, in Derry, Maine, um, for It, for example. But for our stories, same thing with Faulkner. And he imagines these places in a fake county called Yachna Patakwa. I'm not saying that it's hard to say, um, which is seemingly based upon a real place called Jefferson County. I'll provide a map for it. What you want to know is that Faulkner bases his stories upon these actual uh, uh, or slash mythological places. You could see them on a map. Where does the Ambanquish take place? Where does Light and August, Absalom and Absalom take place? If you have time, read Faulkner. He, he, he's a brilliant, brilliant writer. Um, I think I've talked to you about his stream of conscious narration. Um, the collection of these stories, as I mentioned, they seem to move in progression. These are collected as the Unvanquished manuscript. Uh, manuscripts, I should say. These are the, the stories starting with Ambuscade, which literally means ambush, retreat, and raid, and so forth. Um, I, they're the earliest ones in the Sartorus line. The Sartoruses are a family that comes up quite a bit in much of his novels. This is when Bayard or Sardi is a boy. I'm not quite sure what happens to Ringo, um, to be honest with you. And you get to see some of his family as well, um, or pardon me, some of the extended family and, and other slaves like Phil uh, Philadelphia's, uh, Louche, others. And the, the idea is that there's a, lar there's a sense of freedom and Louche believes in it, right? And there's going to be following Sherman or at least following the Union soldiers for, for the African-Americans there. Um, with retreat, what you want to know if you're doing that section is that it's, it's based on a dream that the grandmother has of someone stealing their trunk or silver that's been buried in the yard, right? We know that Southerners would bury their, their belongings in the yard to ensure that they weren't taken, um, and that she takes the trunk and is traveling with the group to Memphis, which should be hypothetically a place of refuge, so I think the Union had gotten there as well. I mean, if you're wondering where we are in terms of the chronology, we've got the Battle of Corinth, we've got the Battle of Vicksburg, and Ambuscade, so we're into the Civil War, God, I don't know, 1863 maybe? I'd have to do my historical fact checked up a little bit more. But um, we know that they're trying to make their way up to Memphis. She thinks she'll be um, uh, safe there. Um, they're riding with an old carriage. The boys are riding in the back. They encounter fires, loose horses, raiders. Um, and that's basically what retreat is. They're retreating during the time of battle, to use the analogy of Faulkner's title. Ambuscade might be an ambush taken upon the Union soldiers by Sardi and Ringo when they shoot at them. Um, they also have that little game they play at the beginning. 
So there's that, you know, it's, it's a game of ambush, like you and I would play Risk. Um, uh, at least I would when I was growing up. Um, other things you may want to note, I mean, there's that long uh, diversion at the beginning of Retreat, if you read it, the two uncles, and they talk about Colonel Sartorish, Sartorish, excuse me. So he gives us a character study. It's kind of long-winded. You don't need to know these two characters, the two uncles that um, Sardi comes across. They're unhappy with Colonel Sartorish and his, um, uh, his machinations in several respects. Um, but the idea that you, you want to get across is what are the major events that occur in each one? Um, uh, how do we develop or how do we get a sense for Bayard and Ringo and their interactions? It should be noted that Ringo is a slave, um, but he's treated as almost an equal in the Sartorius family. He's a little boy. He's best friends with Sardi. So, the, 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 you know, Faulkner's doing some interesting things in terms of race here, but you want to just get the, the major events. You want to understand it's written from the perspective of a child. You want to see the progression. <clears throat> Excuse me. You want to see the progression of the Sartorius family as they're at their, their Mississippi home, and then they have to retreat up to uh, Memphis. You want to watch for uh, what happens with, with the traveling blacks in retreat, which happens more in raid. I did not ask you to read raid, by the way. And just do your best with Faulkner's labyrinthine, difficult, but engaging prose. You may want to see, have you been to, to these places, Vicksburg, Corinth, and other places in Mississippi? Do you know Oxford, where ha ha Faulkner's from, and where they they're go would be going up, presumably, as they're traveling to Memphis? Um, and kind of just do the best you can. Um, this family is obviously in distress. The Sartorises are in distress. The mail is gone. Um, the family has to travel. The woman, the granny who stands for Old Southern Ideals, has to kind of protect the family. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot to chew on. There's a lot to make sense of. Um, the reading itself is hard uh, in terms of if you don't use the Kindle edition, I recommend the Kindle edition. Otherwise, you have to scroll through multiple pages or find where it is in the Faulkner piece, a Faulk uh, larger Faulkner piece. Do the best you can. Um, make your post over the weekend, and um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Have a lovely day.